Hi there, welcome to the channel. Today's video, we are going to ask and answer some important questions that you need to know about before you can select the best low vision binocular that benefits a visually impaired person, helps them overcome their low vision challenges. Sound interesting? You want to check this out. Hello and welcome to the Legally Blind Geek YouTube channel. My name is Mike. On this channel I focus on overcoming low vision challenges. Today's challenge is helping the visually impaired use a monocular. Select the proper monocular to use and show you, discuss what you need to know as far as how to pick out the right one and how to properly use it. A lot of folks have issues with magnifiers like your hand magnifier the hand magnifier i use this i carry it. it's part of my edc my everyday carry kit or part of my you know low vision tool kit it's got its purpose one is it's got a nice little light on it so it brightens everything up comes in handy when stuff is in the shadow but the problem with it being is for this to work you have to have it really close like now I can see my thumbnail, but this is not always appropriate, especially if you're out and about. Say you want to read a traffic sign or you're walking down the street and you're trying to find out where you're at the corner of what street and whatever, or you're looking for addresses on buildings. You're walking down the sidewalk and you're trying to find a certain street address. Well, sometimes the addresses are above the door. Not always are they on a rural mailbox where you can just walk along and say, oh, well, there's such and such mailbox, such and such number. This is not good for that. What is good for that is one of the uh, binoculars, like this little guy here. This is my basic four power magnification. And it's got a 12 millimeter, I guess, objective lens on it, which gathers plenty of light for the magnification. That works well for stuff that is, say, 50 feet or closer. Generally speaking, you know, 25 or 30 feet. I can throw this up and I can read normal sized street addresses. You know, on the street signs or what people would put above their door. It works, it works good for that. It also works well for going into supermarkets or going into DIY centers. And reading the end caps and finding out where the the lumber is, or where the hardware is, or trying to find, you know, the aisle that has the, I don't know, cereal in it, or salad dressings, or other things that you might be looking for that the handheld magnifier doesn't work very well for. Now, you, you can't get that close to it. Also, when you're walking down the aisle of a grocery store or something like that, you can use the monocular. I mean, once you get it set for a proper distance, you don't really need to mess with the adjustment. You know, you just screw this barrel to fine tune the focus, focus it on something nearer or farther. The good thing about the four power magnification inside is it has a decent field of view so that if you're 10 or so feet away from something, you can get a good look at it and you can read pretty much a sentence at a time or a block of text at a time. Whereas with, um, if you go with something that's got too much magnification, like the one that I like to use for outdoors is this, this eight power, it's eight by 30. So it's eight power magnification and the objective lens is 30 millimeters. So what that does is that provides me a lot of light or better light gathering capabilities when the sun's not out. And when I'm outside somewhere and I'm looking at um, distance viewing, we'll call it, more than 50 feet. If I want to watch the kids play softball or want to play, watch the kids play, you know, a sport that's outdoor where you're a couple hundred feet away with the eight power magnification, it has an, enough magnification that I can at least pick out the, the player or the kid that I'm wanting to see, see the number on their jersey or whatnot. Not can't always read the name, but I can generally always see the number. Especially, you know, on softball, basketball, 
you know, football jerseys, you know, they get the big numbers. This really helps very well for that. Now, what it doesn't do very well is if I'm inside a room or somewhere close, with the magnification being eight powers, the field of view goes from, you know, out here to like really small. I'll show you some photographs and try to illustrate that better in the video. But um, the four power, for me, I can even focus that on, I'm setting two feet maybe away from the monitor on my screen. I can zoom in on this and I can actually see what's on my monitor, which comes in kind of handy if I'm indoors and I'm trying to read the line that's on the bottom of a TV screen. Instead of getting up there and sticking my nose in the screen, I can sit back and I can just, I generally just wear this around my neck with a little lanyard and I can keep it in my pocket. So it's handy. So when I need to magnify something that my hand magnifier is not good at, my monocular is. You know, especially for 10, 15, 20 feet, it works really well for. We start getting past, you know, 10 or 15, 20 feet for me, you know, basically across the room, then I like to have the more magnification so it zooms in on more detail than I can actually see with a four power magnification as a legally blind individual. So that's a couple of trade-offs. Close viewing, wide field of view, this works really well for. Even if I'm out and I'm in the parking lot or something like that trying to find the, where, the, where the wife parked the car, I can generally find it with this because this is what I carry most of the time. The only time that I carry this little guy here or this bigger monocular is when I'm going to a sporting event. If I'm out enjoying my morning cup of coffee on the patio and I hear the squirrels chattering or something like that and I'd like to be able to get a better look at those, this works really well for watching the squirrels argue amongst themselves as to who's getting this ear of corn or that ear of corn out of the feeder. That's just what they do. This comes in handy for that. This, I can't really see the little guys with enough detail to be able to tell if that's the, you know, the old, old, old male squirrel or the adolescent squirrel. This one helps with that. It also helps me to identify birds better too. It's got a good, it, it does as well with color as I can do. So there are different monoculars for different uses. So that's why one of the things you want to do, unless you're like me and you just like to have gadgets for all kinds of different occasions, and you have a propensity to put together, you know, a custom EDC kit, everyday carry kit that fills your needs, then uh, there are options. Decide how you're going to use it that day or how you may be going to use it that day. And for a lot of people in the office or whatnot, this may be all you need. If you're just going to be looking at stuff that's really close, this does a good job at that. For that medium distance from, say, I think the focal distance on this little guy here is like 9 inches. The focal distance on this is 19 inches. So what does that mean? Well, not to you know, make a long story short or a short story long. Is I can take this little guy and I can focus it all the way out. And right there I'm focused to where I can see the screen on my computer real, really clearly. Which is less than an arm's length away. So this works for that focal distance. Okay. And actually it would focus a little bit shinier, a little closer than that. This guy right here, it's got a focal distance of 19 inches. So even though it will focus on something that's within my arm's reach, instead of it being something that I can see, you know, quite a bit of, it'll narrow it down to the point where all I see is maybe one letter on text, if the text is very large or not. Or if I had to throw this thing up, if I had to just focus this all the way out for the longest, closest distance and throw it up to my eye, well, right now I can see my eyeball. It's just around my eyeball here is, is all I can see. 
<clears throat> whereas with the 12 power, I can see the, my whole face, my whole head. So field of view, magnification, all comes into play. And how you're going to use it will dictate whether or not we want something with more magnification in a smaller field of view or a lower magnification with a wider field of view. So we see more at, that we're looking at. Make sense? There you have it. What's the best magnification? How are you going to use it? If you want to see stuff that's close up, I know I'm kind of beating a dead horse here, but just to make sure that it's clear. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comment section down below. I'd really like to hear. Or if you have some experiences you'd like to share, some wisdom that you'd like to impart, please, by all means, use the comment section down below. And by the way, if you're seeing some value in this, answering some questions, you find this worthy, consider subscribing. Maybe even give us a thumbs up. I appreciate it. And um, if you have problems locating like this binocular, an 8x30, or this little guy, the 4x12, I do have some Amazon links in the description box below the video. If you look below the screen of the video, there's the places where you can give it the thumbs up. You can subscribe and stuff. So please, while you're, while you're working your way down, hit the thumbs up. Maybe consider subscribing. Then there's going to be the line that has the title of the video. And then at the end of that, there's going to be maybe three little dots and a, a more button. If you click on that more button, it's going to open up the description. And you scroll down through the description and you're going to find the Amazon links to monoculars that I know that work. I will make a little bit of money if you do follow an Amazon link and you purchase something. But um, other than that, everything that I talk about, everything that I show you, I've either bought with my own money or I was issued that through the VA because I'm a legally blind honorably discharge veteran. So if they didn't issue it to me, I've purchased it. Nobody gives us anything. Nobody furnishes anything for some kind of review. So just wanted to clear the air. Now, having said that, this is basically all you need to know before you purchase the proper or the best monocular for a visually impaired person's needs that helps them achieve their overcoming low vision challenges and goals. One magnification. If you want to see something up close, but not nearly as close as your hand magnifier, you'll want something around a four power. If you want something for distance viewing, say past 20 feet, and even long, farther than that, at 20 feet, the 8x30 still has a, a limited field of view. But the further you get out, 20 feet, 50 feet, or 100 feet, that additional magnification really does come in handy. So, that's the magnification. Focal point is just, again, just to kind of reinforce that, is the minimum focal distance is how close you can be to something and be able to focus the monocular in on it so that you can see and it do more good for you than the handheld magnifier where the focal distance is maybe three inches. Okay. Make sense? Thank you very much. Appreciate all your comments. Really appreciate it. If you consider subscribing, give us a thumbs up button. That's fantastic. Check out the description box down below. Use one of the Amazon links to find out what the cost is on some of these things and what the availability is. I think at the time that this is being uploaded, I believe this was like $260, which is, it's a lot of money, but compared to like the Patriot Viewpoint, which is almost $3,000, it's not a lot of money. And the good thing about this is you can use this rain or shine, warm weather, cold weather, rainy weather. It doesn't really affect us as long as you don't breathe on the lenses and fog it up. Whereas with your digital magnifiers, you know, your Patriot viewpoints and those kinds of devices, they don't like the sun. They absolutely do not like to get wet. And who wants to run the risk of messing up something that costs over a couple thousand dollars just because it got rained on? This guy doesn't care. Okay? So... Thank you very much. 
We'll catch you in the next video.